Hey everybody, this is Beast. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Scotty Allenday. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss another video. Today I am talking about something that I've seen over multiple uh, message boards. Uh, and I just figure I'd, I'd give you my two cents. I'm no way in no way at all a trained professional on this subject. But if you follow through, you may pick up some things that you may not be doing right. So, I am going to tell you how to get a great job in 2023. Now, the first thing about getting a great job in 2023 is making sure that resume is updated. You want to also make sure on your resume, now, with your resume, your key points so that you can be able to basically uh, fit the algorithm and these uh, artificial intelligence robots that are kicking people out like no tomorrow. Number one, you want to make sure that you have your work history for the last three years. Actually, I would go back to the last five years. Put in your work history. Make sure you put your reason for leaving. Don't say for reason for leaving for that particular job, the job sucked. I didn't like the boss. I, I got fired. No. You put down, not a good fit. You put down, looking for something better. You can put down, bad work-life balance. You can put all those things down and it will make your resume look much more appealing. Also put in down, put down what kind of skills that you gained in that position. Like, I reported to work in a timely manner. I uh, counted change accurately out of the, uh, the till. I communicated between the kitchen staff and the customers to complete orders correctly. That sort of thing. Those are the skills that a particular resume needs to have in. Your education, you put down, well, where you went to school, where you went to high school, where you, if, even if you went to community college for one semester, that has to be on your resume. Also, if you took any online courses, that also looks great on your resume. The other thing is, is if you have any special uh, certifications. Number one, in some states you got to have a food handler's card if you're going to work at a, a restaurant. Sometimes in a grocery store, you also need to have a food handler's card. Put that down. The other thing is, just take one moment and reinvest in yourself. And I believe it only costs about 50, 51 bucks. And it's good for two years. And you put down that you are CPR certified. You can take a online course for CPR certification. That puts you above some of the others because that's a, a skill that a lot of people do need. A lot of businesses would like to have. If you have, if you put down on your special skills, if you are have a, if you're bilingual, if you know Spanish, French, German, especially if you need to know sign language. Sign language is very simple to learn the basics. And even if you put basic sign language, you got it. Because that helps break the uh, language barriers in the workplace. Number one is your, is your uh, resume. Your cover letter. I have personally have not used very many cover letters. But if I'm just trying to start out in the workforce, just make it a, little, a small story about yourself. That's really simple to do. Uh, basically, you go for this kind of format. To whom I may concern, my name is your name. I am searching for work in the blank field. I feel that I am strong enough to, to fit into this field because I have these selected skills. I am a hard worker. I am a fast learner. And I am not afraid to ask questions. That right there is is enough for a selling point. 
And basically what a cover letter is, is let's say you're trying to sell a can of dog poo to somebody you don't know. Let's, let's make it simpler. You have a can of elephant dung. It's, it's a true thing. It's a real thing. You have a can of elephant dung, and you need to sell it to your lady across the street. How is your sales pitch going to be for that, out and the, for that elephant dung? So, that's what, that's what the cover letter is. Alright, so the next part is, is making sure you constantly watch the emails. Now, with Indeed, with Indeed, Monster, Glassdoor, job case, whatever the, whatever the uh, I would say, third party uh, job sites, constantly watch them. They'll th keep flinging garbage at you because, well, they want you to fling garbage because they think, well, they're on unemployment. They don't want to find work, but we're going to fling some jobs so they can be able to keep filling out applications. Which confuses the algorithm and kicks out the real applicants that are trying to get the job. So, make sure you keep track of who you filled out, the names of the companies that you filled out your resume to. Just keep track. There's, and there's a little secret why I'll tell you closer to the end of the video. Now, it's out there. You're waiting. All of a sudden, you got some replies back. They start doing phone interviews, and they want to meet you in person. When they do phone interviews, you make sure you're clear. You think the question f before you answer, and that's it. Now, they want to schedule an in-person interview. Okay. Here's two steps to that interview. Number one is your, actually is basically, uh, you're now a private eye. And what a private eye does is don't take, a t take time before they go to that interview to visit the company, visit the website, look at the reviews, visit the company, Talk to people, see what the company is like. If it's a restaurant, if it's a grocery store, go inside, see what the work environment is. If it's a toxic work environment, most employees won't be looking at customers. Most employees won't be talking to customers. Uh, it's just, it just doesn't feel right. And if it doesn't feel right, don't take it. So if it's a toxic work environment, if it's a toxic restaurant, the short staff, because you go in there, when you go into a restaurant, just go ahead and pay homage to the restaurant. Go in, sit down, order yourself a soda, and uh, maybe a club sandwich. Make a few modifications to the sandwich, and just see what the food's like. If the food is nasty and gross, well, you're going to have to deal with the people that, well make nasty and gross sandwiches. If you go into a service station, a place in hospitality or whatever, you can see what the environment is. Is this the type of place you want to work? Now, you go in for the interview. Now, you don't go into an interview with yoga pants. You don't go into an interview with pajamas. You don't go to an interview with mommy and daddy. You go by yourself. You make sure you're dressed for the part. If you are going to go and work in construction, you want blue jeans, button-down shirt, your hair is not done nice, you're ready to go. If you're going to work at a fine restaurant, you need to have dress pants, basically a white shirt, like if you are getting ready to go to work for the first time. Make sure your hair is done up. If you wear makeup, you put makeup on, the whole nine yards. You dress to the part of the position or the job that you're going to work for. You don't want to go and apply for a gas station, go into the interview, and be dressed up like if you're going to go to a funeral for Aunt Margaret. Nah, that's, that's not going to cut it. You overdress for the part, and to the interviewer, they're going to think that you're a phony. Now, throughout the interview, listen to your interviewer, because more than likely that's HR. That's human resources that's interviewing you for the job. 
Now, if they are very firm and very direct and they're, and they're talking to you about, uh, well, this is, this is a right-to-work job and, and uh, almost barking orders at you, run for the hills. If they are very friendly and warm and inviting and saying, hey, this is, you're going to be a great fit. You're, you're going to love working here. We've had, I mean, we have people that, we have veterans here that's been working for 30 years. And we're going to make sure that you're, not, you're one of those. And they talk about the benefits and they tell you what the pay is. They don't hide anything from you. Maybe that is a very positive work environment. Now, a lot of times they'll say, well, we're gonna, we'll give you a call back and let you know. And they give you a call back, they offer you a job, it's up to you. You've done your homework, you know exactly what you want. Well, is this a good place to go and work? Now, I'm gonna go back to where I was talking about with Indeed, and you wanna make sure that you keep track of who you've applied for. Now, let's say you had only two responses and Nobody, you didn't want those three, but the other ones, they still have the, the job up. Here's a little secret. A lot of times, these third-party job-seeking sites kick out people's resume. Makes them disappear in the thin air. Now, you haven't heard back through the website. Now, you want to, through the uh, third-party website, now you want to go back to the direct website. So let's say, for example, you wanted a job at Hertz. And Hertz had a job for somebody that is going to uh, process the cars that have been there long enough to be sold back to the dealerships. And, well, the job is still, on, still posted. Nobody's responded. Well... Maybe it's time to go onto Hertz's website, go into their career opportunities, and apply directly through their website. And most of the time, the algorithm will kick people out. You go into the website, and they say, you are the one that we wanted. So that's a little bit of a secret. That's a little bit of a hack. Use it. Good luck with your job searches. If you have anything else you would like to add to this video, please drop it in the comment section below. I'll be glad to see it. I'll be glad to read it. And uh, let your friends and family know. Hit that, again, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss another video. Until next time, keep on rocking.